Does your Ender 3 need a part cooling fan? So this video stems from a video that Chuck Hellebuck did over at the Filament Friday YouTube channel. He took an Ender 3 and he did some prints with the part cooling fan and without it, and he got almost identical results. And this is something that I've seen in the past on different printers. So I wanted to do the test for myself. Part cooling fan, no part cooling fan, and maybe a couple of different scenarios so I can explain why this is happening. Now this is in no way to prove or disprove Chuck's results. I have faith in those, Chuck is a friend of mine, but I thought it'd be a really fun test to do myself. So that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to run some test prints. In fact, we should do that with the proper filament. One moment. How about some Filament Friday Blue for all these tests? So we're going to do some test prints with the fan and the fan off. See if there's any difference. All the G-code I'm going to use is exactly the same except for the fan settings. So let's get to printing and then we'll talk about the results after. So the fan and no fan tests are done. Let's check them out side by side. So this one is with the fan on, and this one is with the fan off. So I'm seeing the same thing as Chuck did. There is no difference with fan on or fan off. So Chuck's right, and I never doubted him for a second. But why is this happening? Because I know for a fact that PLA likes to be cooled as it's being laid down. I've recently used printers with no part cooling fan, and it didn't go so well. These came off the same exact machine, no settings were changed. This one, no part cooling at all. This one with a desk fan running next to it. It completely changed the overhang. So I've got some theories on this. One, it's the part cooling fan and duct that the Ender 3 is using. It's not directing the air necessarily all that well, and probably not kicking out much at all. It's a very small fan, probably ineffective. But two, the hot end fan. I think the hot end fan is supplying enough air to cool the model with or without the part fan. So here's a shot of the hot end fan. You can actually feel quite a bit of air directed around the nozzle without that part fan being on. It's pretty cool under here. And you can see the part fan is one of these slimline fans. It's about 10 millimeters thick. They don't kick out all that much air. And the part fan duct is just a completely open trough. There's nowhere to direct it to the nozzle. It's just blowing a broad stream over this area. You can see with just the hot end fan running, the water is moving around pretty good. And this is with the hot end fan off and we'll kick the part fan on. The part cooling fan is blowing this direction and it does move the water around pretty well, but I don't think it makes a difference whether it's this fan or the hot end fan. So let's test this theory just for fun. I've got this aluminum tape. I'm going to block the air from the hot end fan from getting to the nozzle and then test again with part fan on and part fan off. There's my brilliantly executed taping job. There is just as much gap on this part fan as there ever was, which wasn't much. You can see the water still moves a tiny bit with my tape on, but not so much underneath the hot end. If we kick the part cooling fan on now, you definitely see the water start to move around. So we've got our tape on, now we do our test prints again, just to see if it changed anything. The benchies are done, let's take a closer look. So they don't look too bad from up front. This is fan, this is no fan but we definitely want to get a shot of that overhang. And there's where the part cooling really comes in. This is no fan, this is fan. You can see just how rough the front of that is. It actually turned out a lot better than I thought it would. So the hot end fan is definitely adding cooling to the model, but surprisingly the stock part fan that comes on the Ender 3 is doing a pretty nice job. Now you probably still do want to rework that duct or switch it out to a different type of fan to make it even better, but for what that fan is, it did okay. Now some of you are saying, why do I care if the hot end fan is cooling down the model? And if you're printing just PLA, you probably don't. The more cooling, the better. But if you want to print some other type of plastic that doesn't like part cooling so much, 
We might want to design a plate or something that blocks that hot end fan from the nozzle so that it's easier to control that airflow. And just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I'm going to show you the Benchy that has the part cooling fan on when it wasn't blocked and the part cooling fan on when it was blocked. So these were both with the part cooling fan on, but this one was when the hot end fan was blocked and this one was with the hot end fan open. They're pretty much identical. But the point being, whether the hot end fan is blocked or not, on PLA, the part cooling fan is doing an adequate job. So the main idea behind Chuck's video was the slicer settings. You can tune your slicer to help you reduce the amount of part cooling that you need. And that's not a bad way to go. You should definitely check those settings out. But in this scenario with the Ender 3 or a CR10, I've seen it on some ANET machines as well, you're actually getting just a little bit of bump from that hot end fan. Now Chuck makes some great content and without him making that video, I wouldn't have made this one. Please go check out all his content over at the Filament Friday YouTube channel. All of his information will be in the description below. Thanks Chuck. I hope you liked this video or you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. And from now on, my Ender 3 is going to be the Filament Friday Ender 3.